the article went into how many federal employees there are. It's something like 2.7 million with 600,000 or so being postal employees. But when you look at where the 1% is, economics uh, in the dictates of what you have to earn is somewhere in the neighborhood of 300,000 and some change to be in part of the 1% wealthiest. Um, there are several medical officers in the Veterans Administration that are part of the 1%. Um, there are 6,100 or so federal workers that are earning more than a quarter of a million dollars a year. There are 17,000 or so who are earning over 200,000 a year. And uh, agencies like the National Endowment for the Humanities, almost half of their employees are paid over a hundred thousand uh, dollars. There, are, the argument here is that free markets wouldn't support these salaries. It's only government, it's only federal government salaries that are earning this much. Some people for laundry, doing laundry, were making over a hundred thousand dollars a year to do that, based on their base salary of thirty-seven thousand or something like that, but on overtime as well where they were paid time and a half. They would have worked 100 hour weeks in order to get that sort of money. But it's entirely claimed that they worked 100 hour weeks. Thank you, that's the question. So they had done some research about this. When you are asking people in this country to pay 100,000, 200,000, a quarter of a million, $370,000 for employees of the federal government, you would better be giving them something worth it. Do you think the VA has the reputation for excellence that would allow them to attract people that would earn 300 and some odd thousand dollars a year for medical officers, whatever that might be? I think the VA has got a pretty bad reputation for buffing and polishing coins. These are not jobs you can get outside the government. Doing laundry for $100,000 a year, you can't get that job in the free market, in the regular market. And yet we're asking people to do with less. We're cutting benefits here and there for all sorts of people. We are talking about austerity measures all across the board, defense cuts here, uh, social service cuts there, and we are paying tons of people six-figure salaries in the federal government for doing things that in the private sector are completely, completely a fraction of that. It's now, are those, are those numbers take-home pay and it doesn't take into account the, the benefits and all of the other... Right. It's just things. salary. Because it, it used to, when I was growing up, we were always taught that federal government employees made less in cash because they had all of these other benefits of being a federal government employee that made it be equal to the high salary you could get you'd get on the free market and so right. you know working for the federal government even though you made less it was still okay to try to convince people to work for the federal government but now we're that's that's absolutely backwards and it seems as if federal government employees are the aristocracy in this nation well, I mean, this isn't just the federal government. We've seen this in state and local governments. Remember the disaster in Los Angeles with the school system, the unified school system. The head of that was making like 350 or 400 grand a year. She was making nearly twice what Obama gets as president of the United States. I mean, leader of the free world, kind of an important job. And when you go down the list in California, there are there are handfuls and handfuls and probably even over a hundred and some people working in state or local government that are making over two hundred grand a year. So you know what, let's have a can we have a war on one percent in the government? I think that's a great idea. Let's and they fight, have huge pensions. Let's fight the one percent that are in, in, in state, local and federal government. I think and they can't get idea. fired. Like the 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 free market right. would have these people out if they didn't do their job. You cannot get rid of a federal employee. There's no competitive pressure for them to improve or to you know to get better at their jobs or to even get a promotion. There's no competitive pressure to hold down their wages because they ask their boss 
to get somebody else to pay money. So it's not like, you know, in the in the free market, when you ask your boss for a raise, the boss is only going to do so knowing that your expenses decrease the amount of or you know increase his increase his uh, expenses overall, and so he needs to increase his top line to match that. Whereas in the government, they never can, they never have to worry about the top line. They never have to worry about the actual value you're bringing because it's somebody else's money that they're spending. If I'm showing you wonderful pictures of the 3D ultrasounds of what your baby looks like, and that not that beautiful? And don't you want to be the creator of this beautiful thing and then be so brave and so generous that you give birth to this beautiful baby and then you give it up for adoption so that somebody who has wanted a baby now has this baby and you did this for them and you are a hero for ever for this child. Now you've just gotten somebody to join you in the anti-abortion movement.